Plastic is not an inexpensive material for us to use. Who's paying the price of this? We pay the price. We pay the price with our health, the environment, the ocean, our waterways, our neighborhoods being polluted and looking disheveled and unsightly. But the thing is, if you market things at people and you repeat it to them enough, then they, they believe you, right? So plastic is not a cheap material. I'm Deanna Cohen. I was born in Hollywood, California in the United States, and uh, I am a co-founder of and I'm the CEO of the Plastic Pollution Coalition. We're a global coalition. We were founded in the end of 2009. Since then, we have grown to over 700 NGOs and businesses around the world. We're on six, from 60 countries, and we are working to stop plastic pollution and to raise awareness about the toxic impact on human health, animal health, the ocean and waterways, and the environment. So we really are trying to take a big picture view of this problem and work on it at every level. Support groups that are working on a grassroots level on everything from beach and river and environmental cleanup to groups that are working on turtle habitat restoration or preservation to groups that work with students and educating students in schools to engagement with businesses and corporations to create more extended producer responsibility to policy and legislation and bans and whatever it's going to take to measurably reduce single-use plastic. Well, I would say plastic is such a new material. It was really only discovered and come into use in the last hundred years and and at this big kind of consumption rate in the last 50 years. The problems that we see with plastic are this. Plastic is toxic from the beginning until the end, and it doesn't go away. So from extraction and war, all the way through production and manufacturing, to it is toxic when we use it for our health, when we package food and beverages, etc., in it, and then it immediately becomes a waste disposal issue an ocean dumping issue and then once it gets into the environment or the ocean or waterways it breaks into smaller bits it's ingest it breaks down from the sun from wave action it's ingested by the entire marine chain and it comes back to us again if we depend on sea life as uh, our primary protein source what i like to say about plastic is it's this incredible material uh, but when we use it and we design with it for intended obsolescence, so when we design things that are meant to be used for a very short amount of time, we, this is an irresponsible use of a valuable material. And most people don't know that plastic is primarily made from oil and petroleum. Many, many people don't know that. And then even some of the solutions that people are developing using corn or bioplastics, plastics made from plants, just changing the carbon source is still bad because we're adding phthalates and bisphenols, these different groups of chemicals that have been identified as being estrogenic or endocrine disruptors. So they impact us, human health. These chemicals, phthalates and bisphenols, BPA, BPB, BPC, BPS, BPZ, these chemicals have been linked to many, many human health issues, including lower sexual function, sterility and infertility, uh, breast cancer, brain cancer and prostate cancer, lower IQ in children, babies in utero who are exposed to these chemicals. It's been linked to shortened anogenital distance, to smaller penis size, to feminization of boys, so boys getting breasts, to early menses and girls. Any one of these things, to me, is enough information just to know that there's a link. There is enough information to make me look at my use of this product and try to figure out how to reduce it in my own life, for myself, and for my family. So um, it's a, an incredible material when we use it wisely. But unfortunately, we don't use it wisely, particularly for our plastic bottled beverages or plastic bottled water. And uh, people have this kind of, we live in this fantasy that you know, that the whole problem is just that the problem has been put on us, the consumer, as if we need to do a better job of recycling. We just need to recycle better. We need to put it in the garbage can. This is not true. What's happened is industry has pushed the responsibility onto the public and consumers, and that is false. It's just false. And in fact, it's wrong. And so we would like to see extended producer responsibility, holding corporations and companies accountable to take back 100% of their packaging. 
That's what we'd like to see. And we'd like to have everyone move, everyone around the world move and begin to think, how do we live in a zero waste way? Nature doesn't create any waste. We are part of nature. We're not something separate from nature. We are part of nature. We're animals. We're part of nature. How do we move in this direction so that we are creating less waste? So we're creating no waste. So we're creating zero waste. How do we do that? And you can look to many traditional uh, things in different countries, from India, from, from all different countries, of using banana leaves or uh, as plates or things to eat with, coconuts, calabash, um, you know, utilizing clay or unfired clay to drink out of, to drink tea, using glass, which is not going to impact our health in the same way, or using wood or bamboo. We have all these materials stainless steel. We have all these materials that are available to us. Why? Why are we using this material which has been given a false sense of being inexpensive or cheap?